in one of the earlier lectures, I mentioned that the concept of random and systematic effects are not absolute concepts, and that under certain conditions, systematic effects can become random effects. And this is something we will now look at more carefully. Here is a scheme of a measurement result. We have here concentration axis, and on day one, we have obtained these results. We have made five repeated measurements on that day, and their values are here. And now these values are affected both by random and by systematic effects. And we can see that the random effect causes the differences between these values. They do not agree among themselves. But the systematic effect we don't see from here, because all those values are shifted from each other. And now there are a number of systematic effects that from day to day can be different. And this is exactly the case here. So let us look what happens if we now do the same measurement on more days. See, on day two, all measurements were shifted from the result of day one. And on day five, they were off by this much. On day nine, they are off to here, etc. So we see that within each of those numerous days that are depicted here, the systematic effects has different direction and different magnitude. And this means that in the context of many days, or in the context of long term, this effect is not anymore a systematic effect, but is a random effect. And if we now look at the histogram that is formed from all these results, then it in fact represents quite nicely the normal distribution function, which means that the systematic effect also gives its contribution into the scatter of the results. And if we look the, at the data in long term, we can treat this systematic effect as a random effect, and we can determine its magnitude by repeating measurements on different days. And this is, as we will see in the coming lectures is a highly useful possibility for practical measurement uncertainty estimation. This example is also useful for distinguishing between repeatability and within lab long-term reproducibility or as it is also called intermediate precision. So the repeatability causes the scatter within days. So, for example, on this day, due to repeatability, the scatter is this wide. On day number 9, the scatter is around this wide. On day number 17, the width of the scatter is like this. On day number, day number 22, the scatter is this wide. So we see, in all those cases, the scatter is roughly this much. But, if we look at all those results together, then the within lab long-term reproducibility or intermediate precision characterizes the scatter over all those days. So that the scatter, if expressed as intermediate precision, is very much wider than the scatter expressed by repeatability. And it's easy to see why it is wider. Into repeatability, this systematic effect does not go in. But in the intermediate precision, this systematic effect is also included. Therefore, the standard deviation of repeatability is always smaller and sometimes very much smaller than the standard deviation or within lab long-term reproducibility, or as it is called, intermediate precision. And here we can visually characterize those standard deviations. Repeatability standard deviation amounts to roughly this width, and 
intermediate precision standard deviation, this width, or half of the width, actually. 